welcome to another episode of Fully Charged News. Now, before I start, I just want to say thank you to four lovely, very special Patreon supporters who support us to the tune of $10 a month or more. And that is Dinah Mason, Mark Butterworth, Andy Jameson, and Richard Lenderyou. Thank you very much for your support. We, as I always say, we could not do this without you. And now before I go even further into a, just a few news stories I want to cover, uh, there's some corrections. Because uh, as in all journalism, as we are all discovering now, uh, mistakes are made. And I'm not a journalist and I make lots of mistakes. So here's a few things I just want to correct very quickly. I have mentioned numerous times before on uh, Fully Charged about Professor uh, John Goodenough, who is the guy who uh, was part of the team that originally in, uh, came up with, invented the lithium ion battery back in the early 1970s. I keep referring to this, the new solid state battery technology that's emerged out of Austin, Texas, the University of Austin, Texas, uh, as being as though the team was run by Professor Goodenough, which is not quite true. He's the kind of mentor behind the team, but the team is being run by Maria Helena Braga. Now, in a classic example of white male sexism and patriarchy, I have continued to forget to mention that it's actually Maria Helena Braga that is running this team, and she's an amazing woman. I have read about her. I should know better. I'm old enough to have known better. Sorry. Anyway, that's one correction. Another one is the IKEA solar slash battery pack that you can get for £3,000. Now, like an idiot, I actually read a report in a respected journal uh, that stated that very clearly, that these the, the prices are starting at £3,000. Well, I've had numerous responses from people who've tried to get something that resembles some solar panels on a battery for £3,000. They can't get anywhere near it. They, they start at about five to £8,000 is more realistic. It's still a brilliant deal, and if IKEA install that, that's all good for them. But I should have checked my sources, like a journalist does. Oh no, wait a minute, like a journalist never bothers to, they just cut and paste the story. Norway car sales, another small mistake I made. I said that it was 42% of all new car sales, which it is, but it's 42% of new car sales are vehicles with a plug. 20% of the total are plug-in hybrids, 22% of, to of the total are pure electrics. So it's not quite the same. but. The fact is that Norway is still uh, buying 20% more new electric cars than we are in the UK. We're about 2%. So hats off to Norway, you still rock, you lead the pack in terms of electric vehicle adoption, which is a good thing. Now, Lord Lawson, uh, he's the man who used to be Chancellor of the Exchequer in the United Kingdom, old politician. Uh, he's the father of Nigella Lawson, the famous TV cook, who's lovely. I've met her. She's very nice. I don't want to meet him. Anyway, uh, Lord Lawson was on the BBC radio uh, for morning radio show, very widely listened to in this country, um, the Today programme, and he just was spouting on his normal waffle about how climate change is fake and how renewable energy doesn't work. I mean, it was boring. I mean, A, it was really boring, and B, it's so patently obviously not true, it's barely worth commenting on. But it did create a, quite a large outcry from the scientific community. They were saying, well, why have you got him on? Why hasn't it got someone else on that, that counters his absurd claims? But for once, the scientific community really uh, stepped to the fore, stepped up to the plate and said, this is outrageous. Why are you allowing this man to spout all this nonsense? What about some balance? What about uh, an actual scientist? I didn't think anything would happen, but the following day, they actually got some actual scientists on the same programme and they refuted everything he said, of course, very simply, and were actually allowed to state some scientific facts quite intriguing really. It just shows that every now and then a bit of a Twitter storm can have a little effect. Not very often. Now there was a time when every other comment that I would receive on YouTube or, or the Twitter sphere would be uh, along the lines of hydrogen is the future or everyone knows that hydrogen is the future and that, those ones must have come from people who actually are time travellers and had come back in time so they know what the future is and they're coming back to tell us which is very good of them. The number of those tweets has diminished. There's not so many people say hydrogen is the future. But that's not to say that hydrogen doesn't have incredible possibilities and prospects of in the future energy economy. Well, a company called Cadent, I just wanted to remember the name, Cadent is proposing a system where they extract hydrogen from natural gas, which is how we get hydrogen 95% of the time. So they're proposing to inject uh, into the gas grid 10% hydrogen in the gas mix. Uh, which is really good. I mean, it's not that new and not that exciting. They're already doing it in Germany. But what is exciting 
is that Northern Gas Networks in the UK are proposing to convert the entire city of Leeds to run on hydrogen. Now that does require some retrofitting of existing domestic gas appliances. Your gas boiler and your gas cooker and your gas oven. Tiny adjustments need to be made to those, so there's a bit of a hassle to do that, but the infrastructure is already there. The pipes are there, the whole the system of delivering that gas to households is already in existence. You don't need to retrofit any of that. And they are also proposing to extract the hydrogen from natural gas. If a whole city can be converted to hydrogen, that means that it's got an open-ended future in terms of where we get hydrogen from, because you can produce hydrogen from electricity. It's a very wasteful process. You get about one, uh, it's, it's four to one, isn't it? So four times more energy goes in than comes out, but, if you've got loads of excess wind energy, which is a thing that we've certainly got at the moment in this country and we're likely to have more of, that's quite a good use for it rather than turning the blades down so they don't turn. When wind turbines aren't turning, it's not because it's not windy, it's because they're producing too much electricity. I'll just say that one more time. Who told me that? An engineer at the national grid, not a hippie. Now, some of you will be aware that uh, some of the large scale solar farms around the world are now installing batteries. In fact, the new ones that are being installed are installed with batteries ready built in. But recently, uh, there's been an announcement that the Revolution Wind Farm off the coast of Martha's Vineyard in the United States is going to have batteries to back up their massive wind turbines. They've got 144 megawatts of wind that they got out at sea, and they're going to have batteries, I'm assuming, back on land, because I don't think they're floaty batteries or underwater batteries. I don't think that works. So I think they'll probably be on land and uh, that will do exactly the same thing. It will level out the um, production from the, the wind turbines. It enables us to use more of the power that wind turbines and solar panels produce. Because when, there's too, when it's generating too much, you put that in the batteries. When they're not generating enough, you take it from the batteries. It's a fairly simple piece of uh, technology to understand. So it is solar and wind and batteries, which I think are the three things that are giving genuine night terrors to the Koch brothers in the United States and to Lord Lawson in this country. So don't tell them. Now, one of the things that I predicted uh, was going to happen uh, after the United Kingdom government's announcement of the 2040 cessation of internal combustion engines, not exactly the most ambitious target I've ever heard in the world, but still, it's better than nothing. Um, but it, it has been quite a strong reaction in the uh, traditional press. Uh, some of the headlines have been great. Uh, electric cars could melt the grid. Uh, electric cars could cause rolling blackouts. Uh, electric car batteries could be thrown away after a week. On and on and on. Every single headline like this, and this covers the entire British press, uses the word could in their headline. These, all these things could happen. We could have to build six new Hinkley Point C nuclear power stations to charge all these wretched electric cars that the government are ramming down our throats. <laughs> Sorry. And things are always being rammed down throats, aren't they, in the Daily Mail? Well, there's a bit of a panic about it at the time. I did lots of radio uh, talk talk shows and some TV stuff when there was a big panic about it. I mean, they moved on now. It's all about North Korea now. But thankfully, the National Grid released a paper just gently pointing out with facts, statistics and some science that we won't be doing all those things. There's no could. None of those things are going to happen. So it's all nonsense, as, as I knew anyway. That is all for now. So I didn't want to do a really long one. Uh, please subscribe to Fully Charged. Please have a look at the Patreon link underneath this one. And as always, if you have been, Thank you for watching.